Welcome everyone to the Mission Branch Library Renovation virtual meeting. Um, we have Spanish translation available this evening and Jose is here and he'll explain how that works before we start with the presentation. Thank you very much. Bienvenidos a todos nuevamente al evento de esta noche. Vamos a hablar sobre la remodelación de eh, la Biblioteca de la Misión. Y como se había mencionado antes, tenemos servicio de interpretación al español para las personas que necesitan ese servicio. En unos momentos se va a encender esa función y van a encontrar en la parte de abajo de la pantalla de Zoom un icono de un globo o de un mundo. Por favor, denle clic ahí y seleccionen el español como su idioma. Si ustedes están uniendo a este evento por intermedio de un iPhone o de una tableta, van a encontrar un menú que tiene tres puntos suspensivos. Denle clic a ese menú y escojan eh, interpretación idiomática y el español como su idioma. Muchas gracias. Uh, go ahead and please start the interpretation mode. Thank you, Jose. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for making the time to join us for this meeting about the Mission Branch Library Renovation. My name is Catherine Del Neo. I am the Chief of Branches for the San Francisco Public Library. I'm joined today by Michael Lambert, our City Librarian, by Kate Patterson, the Library's Public Information Officer, by Architect Andy Sohn from Public Works, as well as by some of our library staff um, who are supporting us in the meeting, um, including Flo Batod, who is taking minutes of this evening's meeting, Anissa Malat, sorry, Anissa, Anissa Malat, Malady, who is um, one of our facilitators of the Zoom event, and also Lisa um, Weddle, who is another one of the facilitators. Next slide, please. We're on slide two right now, which um, shows our agenda for the evening. Our plan is that um, I'll introduce myself and, and our team, which I've done. And then we're going to um, talk about where we've been so far and what some of the goals of the project are. And then I'll turn it over to my colleague, Andy Sohn from Public Works. He will share the final Mission Branch renovation plans. Then, um, Andy will pass it back to me to talk about our temporary library service plans for the mission community and to share an update about the public art at the branch. And then finally, we will have an opportunity to hear your questions and your comments at um, the fifth portion of the meeting. Next slide, please. We're on slide three. The mission branch is a landmarked Carnegie Library. It opened to the public in 1915. Those of you who have lived in the neighborhood for a long time will remember that the Mission Branch was last renovated in 1997. At that time, library service was very different from how it is now. And there are limits to the types of library services we can provide in the current Mission Branch. Additionally, the systems of the Mission Branch are at the end of their lifespans. For these reasons, the library and the Department of Public Works did a feasibility study to inform the scope of this particular renovation project. We developed these guiding principles that you can see on, on the screen for our library renovations. The first is libraries for the 21st century. We think of libraries now as community convening spaces, as a location where you can find books, where you can access information using the internet and the materials in the branch and where you can learn from the community and from engaged presenters and through participation in the events that we have and the programs that we provide. So when we say libraries for the 21st century, that's really what we're, what we're thinking about, some of the core ideas. Another of our guiding principles is that we want our buildings to have flexible and adaptable building designs. Our thoughts with this are that we want the building to be able to be used in a variety of ways on the screen here, you can see a beautiful Carnegie Library that was restored in Philadelphia. And um, you can see that the furniture is on casters and can be rearranged and that people can use the space in different ways, depending on what's going on in the branch. Over time, the, over time, the needs of the community might change slightly and we don't need to renovate the entire branch to reconfigure some of the furnishings to best suit what we're doing in the branch that day. So, 
the movable furnishings and the, the changeable layout and that dynamic nature of the space and responsiveness is something that we really strive for with our, with our library improvements for tomorrow, the lift projects, which includes our mission branch. That said, we also know how important it is to preserve our historic Carnegie libraries. And as I mentioned, the Mission Branch is an historic landmarked building, and particularly the, the beautiful reading room of the space is just glorious. We want to restore it to how it was, how it looked to people when they came into it at the beginning of its, of its existence um, back in 1915. Um, we also really want to be sure to be working within the city's historic preservation framework, which we have done. We want to incorporate monthly functional community meeting spaces. So adding a meeting room back into the mission branch is a really important thing for us. And also even adding a small meeting room on the second floor. And then the final guiding principle is transparency and ease of wayfinding. The idea of this principle is that we want people to be able to come into the branch and easily move through the space to see as they walk through the door that the children's area is over to the right and on the left is the um, on the left is the community meeting space and then in front of them are the stairs to go up to the grand historic reading room on the second floor as you walk through the door seeing the staff welcoming you and you know those are the people to ask if i have some questions as you come up the stairs um, as you come up the stairs to the second floor looking over being able to see that's where the staff are this is i can orient myself i can find materials independently and i can get help from the really great staff of the mission branch next slide please we're on the fourth slide now. Pre-pandemic, the library hosted a number of community meetings in the Mission Branch. Our first round of community engagement took place in May and June of 2018. Our second round of community engagement began in January and um, January and March 2019. The community had the opportunity to participate in addition to those library hosted meetings to participate in the Civic Design Review Committee and Historic Preservation Commission meetings in the summer of 2019 and at numerous library commission meetings over the past few years. At each of these meetings, we've had opportunities to hear from community members like yourselves about your priorities for this renovation project. So what we've done is captured some of the key things that you shared with us and I just wanted to reflect those back to you so you knew what we were bearing in mind as we worked with Public Works to, to design this new space. Um, we heard from you that you were interested in increased flexibility and use of the space. We heard from you that you wanted us to maintain multilingual collections and services, that having Spanish and English materials and Spanish and English staff and Spanish and English library service as a whole was really important to, to the community. We heard that it, it was important to incorporate resiliency features into the building, thinking about the changing environment that we have here in San Francisco and thinking about how we can make the building um, more green and more energy efficient and also how we can respond to, respond to climate changes. We heard that people were interested in restoring a meeting room to the branch. The original Mission Branch Library had a meeting room. It did not have a children's room. When the children's room was added, the meeting room was taken away. We heard from the community that you wanted both. You wanted a great children's space and you wanted a great meeting room. We heard that you really wanted improved program space for everyone. And that meeting room, program space, community room is something that is really important and a great feature of our new building. We heard that you really wanted more public restrooms and um, we expected to hear that because we've heard that from many uh, mission patrons over the years. We heard that you wanted to see if we could expand the footprint of the branch to maybe have modest addition on the branch. And we heard that you wanted a dedicated teen space, that a blue screen was not really sufficient for the teens in the community. And that's something that we had heard a lot from the staff as well. So all of this is a pretty tall order, fitting so much into a relatively small footprint. And I'm really pleased to share with you that our colleagues at Public Works have worked tirelessly and done amazing work and have developed a final design that really fits the brief. We heard from you what you wanted and we knew 
and our, we heard from our staff what they wanted and we knew what our goals were. And I'm just really impressed with the work that Andy Sohn, architect from Public Works and his team have done. And I'm gonna turn it over to Andy now who will share with you the, the final plans, the building design of the Mission Branch. Hi everyone, um, I'm Andy Sohn from Public Works. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to meet in person sometime. I know I've probably met some of you. Um, so Kathy mentioned a few of the reasons why we are, are doing the project. There's really four key reasons. Uh, one is, uh, by the way, we're on slide five. Um, number one is we're putting it back the way it was. We're gonna restore the historic entry and the stair to their um, original locations and get rid of the side door. Number two is we're adding program area um, in the form of a community room and new restrooms, a teen area. Um, and uh, number three is uh, we're responding to the needs uh, of resiliency, environmental resiliency and sustainability. And then number four, as uh, Kathy mentioned, we are replacing worn out building systems such as the elevator and the uh, HVAC systems of the building. <coughs> Excuse me. Next slide, please. This is slide six. Um, I don't have a pointer, so I'll just direct you on the page. Um, the first couple of uh, slides will be floor plans, the building floor plans. This is the ground floor plan, the main floor. And where it says number six at the bottom of the page, that would be 24th Street. To your left, vertically on the page, is would be Bartlett Street side of the building. And to the right is uh, Orange Alley side of the building. And then the top part of the page is the back of the building. Uh, so now you're oriented. Um, um, the, the probably the, the the most notable feature of the building is that now you'll enter the building straight at the front of the building at a new entry. So where it says lobby, you'll see a pair of doors just below that, and that is gonna, that's the original historic main entry of the building. So we're we're putting that back the way it was. Uh, you'll come into the building, and directly in front of you will be a stair that's in the same location and the same size as the original historic stair. Uh, it, and uh, that, that is um, right dead center as you come in, you'll walk up that stair to the, to the main reading room. To your left will be a new feature, which is a community room. And um, in the original building in 1914, there was a, a room called a lecture room. Uh, it later became a children's room in that area. And then later in the 90s, when it, the building got renovated, it became um, the lobby and the entry. But now it's, we're putting it back. We're going we're gonna to gut that area out and restore the community room there. Um, as you come in the lobby, there's a hallway down your left and that, uh, to your left and straight to the back. The elevator is, is back there. It's in the same location it's in now. Um, the reason it's in that location is because it, it's uh, out, outside of the footprint of the historic reading room. We didn't want the elevator landing inside the historic reading room. Um, in the lobby is a welcome desk with three staff stations, including a children's librarian to the far right, um, self-service features, uh, self-checks. There's a, a laptop lending kiosk uh, and print stations in the lobby. To the right is the children's room. Uh, and uh, furthest over, you'll notice that the building is going to be expanded, so we're going to we're going to do an addition to the building because we're taking up so much area with the community room and new restrooms. We needed to expand the building, so the courtyard that you're familiar with on Orange Alley is uh, going to receive a building addition where it says children. Um, so that portion that's kind of outboard of the out outboard of the historic wall will be uh, an add-on to the building. Um, on this floor, we'll have four restrooms. There's currently three. There's a one public restroom that you're, you, you're probably all familiar with. There's a staff restroom and a family restroom. Now, now we'll have two public restrooms, a staff and a family on this floor. Um, yeah, so I think that it covers it for slide six, which is the ground floor. Slide seven um, is the main floor. 
And so in the middle of, so again, it's oriented where it says seven, that would be on 24th street and to your right, Orange Alley. And um, in the middle of, the, of this rectangle in this image, you'll see the stair and that stair is, uh, it, it, you know, it, it comes up to the, to the main floor and it lands and right where you land in front of you will be a display, um, a library display. And above that is, is a public art piece, which we'll talk about. Beyond that wall is, is a restroom. Someone had brought up that you land at a restroom, but it's not true. You, there's a hallway to the left that you go in before you go to the restroom. So you don't, you don't land straight at the restroom. Um, then, then you see the, the entire floor of the historic reading room will be, um, the historic aspect of that room will either be uh, maintained or restored and the, and the pieces that, that aren't historic. Uh, so we, we will be honoring that historic reading room um, fully, including the perimeter bookshelving uh, and so on, and, and plaster work and lighting and things like that. So it's going to be, um, and the existing windows will, will all be uh, the way they, they are now. Um, to, the, to the far right on this plan is, is an area that says teen room. And that teen room um, is, is a new feature. Kathy had mentioned before that you know, currently you, you, cordon, you cordon this uh, that off with, um, with um, some dividers that, that get dismantled uh, when, when not in use. Now the teens will have a dedicated area that's um, age appropriate, the suitable for homework, study, and, um, and things like that with, uh, um, books and, and other um, media inside the space. Uh, there's a study room on the upper left. You see that that's, that's a feature that is, is not currently in the, in the library. Um, and then there will be a staff break room. The furnishings on this floor, we'll, you'll get to see a picture of those a little bit later, uh, kind of a, a gesture of what, what they're gonna look like, but they're gonna be, they're gonna be lower, they're gonna be more mobile. The rooms will be uh, more flexible. To the far left, you'll see there's there, these uh, four rectangles. Those are um, those are tables and chairs, and these, if you see sort of eight dark rectangles, that, that is public computing. And then uh, there will also be a laptop lending kiosk on this floor, which is uh, the same as what you have now. There's a laptop lending kiosk. Um, I think that covers this floor. So next slide. Um, so this is the roof plan, and the reason for showing you the, the picture of the roof is that we have we're going to do solar uh, panels. So um, this is slide eight, and there are solar panels on the roof. It's going to be about an 18 kilowatt system. It's a relatively small system, but we'll have 18 kilowatts. We'll have battery storage um, in the building, and this uh, is, is part of sort of the resiliency and sustainability strategy of the building. So um, this building um, is part of a, a movement amongst city buildings uh, towards electrification. And there's an electrification ordinance now for, for projects that we do. And the intent is that all of the um, fixtures and equipment on, on the, in the project are electric. So if instead of a a gas water heater, you would have electric water heaters. Um, so there will be no more gas appliances of any, any kind. And the reason for that is because um, city buildings are on Hetch Hetchy power, which is 100% renewable. So what it allows us to do is get rid of on-site greenhouse gases. Uh, and it's a move away, it's a national movement, but we're, of course, in San Francisco, we're, we're ahead of the curve and um, we're doing electrification on all of our buildings. The idea behind battery storage is that we can peak shave and charge those batteries up at night when, when, when demand is less uh, on the power grid. And then by day, we can, we can save power with the solar panels. Uh, um, there will be mechanical systems will, uh, will have uh, air filtration, which uh, will allow the building to stay open uh, more days of the year when we have smoke events. So that's been an issue. 
And they will also be, the building will be entirely air conditioned, which it currently is not. Just the children's room has uh, an air conditioning system now. So that also will allow more open days for the library. Uh, currently in buildings that aren't air conditioned, once they get above a certain temperature, um, they need to close because the staff can't work in those temperatures. So, um, and then it also uh, offers a possibility of some, some respite center um, uh, functionality for this building. So that is the sustainability and resiliency piece. So that's slide eight, so next slide. So these are some interior views. This is slide nine. This is the community room. And the, um, you can see in the image, uh, we're, we're, looking towards, uh, we're looking towards 24th Street. And on your right, there's a doorway. And that doorway is the current uh, entry to the building. What it's going to be now is going to be an, it's going to be um, a connection to a fenced courtyard, which is going to be adjacent and sort of an adjunct space to this community room. So it's going to be a very nice space um, where the current um, desk and, and staff offices are. On the left, you see the three Montoya prints. They're kind of spread around the building now, but we're going to consolidate the three prints together as a triptych the way they were intended um, in a niche within the community room. Uh, next slide. This is slide 10. Uh, this is at the other end of the community room, uh, looking towards the, um, the children's room in the main lobby. On the left, you see the Montoya prints. And then you get a sense of the visual transparency. So where, where you see that window in, in the image, that's currently a concrete uh, uh, structural wall that we're gonna open up. So that, that um, is, is one of the ideas here is that the community room is, is a more connected space to the building that this room can be used in times uh, less as a discrete community room and more as an integral community space uh, that has um, uh, the ability to, to function uh, differently at different times of day. So it could be, it'll, it will serve as a children's story time room. Uh, it could serve as a teen uh, homework study area afterwards. It can, you can do any kind of conventional programming that you would in a community room. But the idea of, of more connectedness and more transparency uh, and making the most of, of the limited square footage of the building. So that's um, what you see here and, and a lot of our design intent. Uh, next slide, please. This is slide 11. This is a view from within the lobby, just at, in, inside the door of the community room. And you look, at, you look up the stair there and it's, it's got a stone feature wall. And uh, it's the same, we've, we've had this question uh, before about the width of, in, of the stair and it is the same width as the historic stair. It's done in monumental finishes, bronze and stone. It's gonna be beautiful. You've got uh, a desk that's flexible, height adjustable for staff. You've got staff work area directly adjacent to the desk with a window. And then you've got self-service functions on, on the front hand uh, right hand side of the image there and then the, there's a children's room beyond children's room um, will have a themed entry and some other um, decorative elements that are uh, you know appropriate for kids um, next slide please this is slide 12 now we've come up this stair now we're inside the the main reading room the historic reading room you can see uh, it's gonna it's gonna remain as is. It's gonna be brightened up with with new paint. The stair lands uh, in the middle of the space. Um, uh, it's hard to describe, but there's a, a woman standing there in the image, and there's there'll be a library display at the top of the stair, and then you see the sort of colored um, stained glass window. That's currently uh, that's that was an that was an existing win, an original window in the building in 1914, and then in the 1990s when it was the building was um, renovated, that window got blocked off. So we have decided to um, we're not able to unblock the window, but we're going to create a, sh a a light box behind it, and there's uh, we've commissioned public art. Uh, as a piece of stained glass for that. And Kathy will talk about that uh, a little later. Uh, off 
sort of um, in the center of the image, you see the desk, this sort of a curved shape, that'll be the staff desk. And then the furnishings to the right uh, of the page are a technology corral with a scan station, print station, and laptop kiosks. And then you can, uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is slide 13. This is another view of this same room. You can see that the furnishings, the shelving will be lower. The shelving is actually um, on mobile dollies. So if, if need be, it could be moved, um, rearranged, changed. The furniture will be, uh, will have a lighter appearance. It won't necessarily be white like this. That it, that's the, the images here are kind of placeholder images. So we left them as a sort of a generic white color uh, rather than um, defining, you know, exactly what the furniture is going to look like, but it gives you a sense of the scale and sort of the design sensibility uh, of that furniture. Um, uh, next slide, please. Um, this is slide 14. Now this now we're inside the teen room, which is on the western side of the building. This is inside that that expansion It's up on the on the second floor, the main floor, and it has large windows facing west. Um, and it's going to be a tall, lovely space. The, the um, right-hand part of this room that you see in this picture is the historic terracotta tile and uh, medallions with the, um, the author's names. And that, that'll be, that decorative terracotta will be an interior feature of that teen room. Next slide. And this is slide 15. This is another view of the teen room and you can see the terracotta. And then you can see in the middle of the image, you see a, um, a, a portal. And that portal is, is a large you know, opening in the historic wall that will take you back into the main reading room. To the right are uh, big windows facing west. Next slide, please. So these will be some exterior views of the building. This is a slide number 16. And this is at the corner of Bartlett Street and 24th Street. Um, so where the, the current entrance to the building is, it'll now be that courtyard entrance. And you can see in this image, just above the words Bartlett Street, um, a fence, and that's gonna be a new fenced plaza that um, offers a little, um, a little security with, uh, to, uh, in, that, in that connection when you talk. So the, the idea here is that you have an outdoor program space. So we'll be able to come in, do story time, we can do outdoor story time, and we'll have a fenced, a fenced, uh, a little fenced courtyard um, directly adjacent to that room. The street trees are the existing trees that will remain. The sidewalk will be uh, newly paved. Um, uh, next slide, please. This is slide 17. The sidewalk will be newly paved and we get planters uh, along the face of the building that you can see there. On the left-hand side, next to the guy with the bicycle, you can see the new front door, which is, um, which is uh, going to be patterned after the historic front door. And then um, where it says Orange Alley, you can see our building addition uh, uh, next to the building. We have a little datum that separates the, um, the two structures. We have a, we're, we're actually literally touching the building very lightly, the existing historic building. The addition is is going to be done. It's done in complementary materials, uh, and with a very sympathetic scale and and proportion. And then you can see the uh, space frame a church on the alley next to the building. Uh, next slide, please. This is slide 18. This is another view showing the building addition. It's going to have metal wall panels, decorative metal wall panels, and and architectural concrete down below. And you can see the the main entry. Uh, on the center of the, the building. So that will be, again, that'll be the, the new restored main entry to the building. Next slide, please. And this is slide 19. It's another view uh, from essentially up from Valencia Street, looking down the street where you can see the addition uh, and its placement next to the building. Um, next slide. Okay, so this is slide 20. Um, and when we get when we get to the Q and A, I, I assume that we'll be able to go back and look at any images that people want to uh, have a closer look at. But slide twenty is is a project schedule, and um, 
it says building permit complete September 2021, which was the case, but we're not quite there. We have, we've got one more, um, one more issue to resolve before we'll have a building permit, and that's related to the Department of Public Health. Uh, but we're very close to that. We are planning on advertising for bid this month. We're working hard to make that happen. And um, the bid period will be approximately 130 days and we would expect to start construction in uh, the early part of the summer of 2022, if all goes according to plan. Next slide. <clears throat> Sli this is slide 21. The budget, uh, well, the original budget was 19.8 million. Um, we now have a projected budget of 24.7 million. It has gone up. Um, the budget is reflective of current market conditions, COVID escalations. Um, the project scope remains the same, which is good. Next slide. <clears throat> uh, and then the next steps for uh, the architects and construction are to secure the building permit, uh, which we will do this month most likely, and then advertise for bid this month. Next slide. Okay, so this is slide 23. I'm gonna hand this back to Kathy. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Andy. Um, let's see, there we go. So I'm really, Love hearing Andy talk about the building and seeing the designs and um, we'll have an opportunity for folks to um, ask questions about those in just a few minutes. The next two things on the agenda are that first I'll talk to you and share what we're doing currently at the Mission Branch, talk about temporary services, and then share a quick update on public art and then we'll go to the, um, the question and answer portion of our meeting. So for those of you who joined us late, you may not have seen the, the agenda in the second slide, I believe. Um, so what we are doing right now at the Mission Branch is that our dedicated team of staff, our librarians, our circulation staff, are providing SFPL to go service at the Mission Branch five days a week. That service is being offered Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And because we know how important browsing the collection is to the community, we're supplementing SFPL to go service with bookmobile service four afternoons each week. Visitors to the bookmobile can select items in Spanish and English from the Mission Branch collection, and they can get help from staff in placing holds. The bookmobile is at the, the primary entrance of the branch at 300 Bartlett Street. It's there Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Um, it is there in the afternoon starting at 12 p.m. until 5.30 p.m. In addition to the bookmobile, um, we've got some book trucks usually that are out front as well, where there are even more materials for people to browse. Next slide, please. We're on slide 24 right now. So the library is working closely with the city's Department of Real Estate to secure a storefront space in the mission that will house a full service temporary branch for the duration of the Mission Branch's renovation. We had thought we would be in a position last month to share with you where exactly that would be, um, but we had an unfortunate setback um, right before the, the in-person meetings that we hosted in December. Um, we had hoped that we had, a, we thought that we had a space and we were about to sign the lease, but at the last minute that fell through. Um, but undaunted, we have continued working with our Department of Real Estate colleagues, and we're actually in dialogue with the property owner in the mission right now about a space that we're even more excited about than the first space. It's um, a really great spot, and we hope to have more information for you when we have that lease um, signed. Those services, though, we do plan to begin in early 2022 and to have that in place for the full duration of the Mission Branch closure. Those services will begin and the SFPL to go and bookmobile service at 300 Bartlett Street will, will cease. Um, I wanna just reiterate that it's in the Mission neighborhood and that the goal here is that we will be open to the community seven days per week, including some evening hours. So those are um, our commitments to you. And we just wanted to be sure that everyone has gotten that message that we do plan to have a full service branch seven days per week including evening hours in the Mission neighborhood 
for the entire duration of the project. Next slide, please. When that site is up and running, what you'll find at the temporary site will be materials that you can browse and check out in Spanish and in English. We're gonna be focusing on our pop most popular materials um, because the temporary site will be much smaller than the, the actual mission branches, um, but we'll have fresh and current materials, all of the new books, all of the, the lucky day books, the things that people are, are asking for and are kind of the hottest titles, um, similar to what we're doing on the bookmobile. We'll have Holds Pickup service continue. We'll be able to provide public computing so people can come in and get connected with the internet using the library computers. We will have the same copy, fax, and scan services that all of our branch libraries have. And most importantly, we will have the Mission Branch staff at this site and they will be there to serve you and to help you to find anything you need in, um, in English and in Spanish. I also want to um, assure you that the temporary site will be ADA accessible. Next slide, please. The final portion of our presentation is just to share out about the amazing opportunity we've had to expand the public art at our Mission Branch Library. Um, as you saw during Andy's presentation, we have public art already in the Mission Branch. And that art is a triptych by Emmanuel Montoya. And that triptych has been divided up. Um, when you had seen it last in the branch, you probably noticed it as you were entering the, the lobby area and walking toward the children's room. The three pieces of art were sort of disjointed and they weren't pulled together in the way that the artist had envisioned them and intended them. Um, as Andy said earlier, that triptych will be brought together in the mission community room space, and it will be able to be seen all the time. And um, it's gonna be really prominently displayed and well lit, and it's just going to be a much nicer presentation of that art. But additionally, because of the size of this renovation project, it actually warrants new public art. And so we worked with our colleagues at the San Francisco Arts Commission who have facilitated the process to select the artist who will create the new public art and they've been working on this process for the course of more than a year now. The process included the convening of panelists from within the mission community. And I want to um, read the names of those art review panelists because they have done great work in, in coming together and reviewing the submissions. And um, I'm hopeful that you'll hear people's names that you recognize as members of your community. The first person um, is Ramon Hernandez, who is our adult services branch manager at the Mission Branch Library. Um, Val Valerie Imus, artistic director and co-director of Southern Exposure. Maybel Jimenez, artist and community representative. Angelica Rodriguez, the gallery coordinator of the Mission Cultural Center. Abby Schneer, arts commissioner. Susan Pontius, Civic Art Collection and Public Art Program Director, San Francisco Arts Commission, and Andy Stone. Um, those last two folks, um, Andy Stone's our, our building project architect, um, had um, a counseling type of a, a voice. They were not voters in the final decision, but um, provided guidance and um, information about, about the, the building. The process the Arts Commission led also included an opportunity for the public to provide feedback to the artist review panel on the proposals that were submitted by the three shortlisted artists, Juana Alicia, Josue Rojas, and Javier Rocabado. The community response, um, we had been a little bit concerned that because the branch was closed, we wouldn't be able to put the poster boards up and have a little feedback box like we have done with our other art um, our other public art for libraries, the Arts Commission came up with a really creative solution, which was to post the submission, post the three um, finalists, the three shortlisted artists on the, the metal doors of the branch um, so that people who were walking by could actually engage with the art. And we did a lot of email communications and publicized this through the library's website. And we actually got 
more than 300 responses from the community, which was just fabulous because um, at a time when we weren't all able to get together and look at these um, submissions in person necessarily, we had a lot of people who were um, engaging through um, using the internet to, to vote. Um, and it was just a really super process. And ultimately the panel decided that Juana Alicia was the finalist. Next slide, please. We're on slide 27. This slide, you can actually see all three of the um, shortlisted artists. Um, the largest and most prominent is the Nopal de la Nation by Juana Alicia. And you can see the beautiful um, work that all three artists did. And we're just so pleased with the outcome. And I want to share with you Juana Alicia's words about her own artwork. Um, and, and her intentions with it, which are that it will bring the vibrant life of the natural world to the library environment, offering its yellow flowers with red star-shaped centers to the creative, intellectual, and community-oriented space of the reading room. The organic forms will complement the Beaux-Arts architecture and provide a visual respite from the hard-edged urban environment. Hearing that from the artist, it just really resonated with me because what we were hearing from community members was, is there a way we can incorporate some of the, the natural world into this um, public library in the heart of the mission, which is really a, a very urban environment? How can we bring some beauty and some culture and touchstones of the community? And so um, this art, I hope that you love it as much as I do. It is just so vibrant and dynamic and beautiful and I think speaks to um, just speaks to the neighborhood so and, and the community and what the community voiced so well. The image is going to be created in glass and will be backlit so that light shines through the glass into the space. Um, the artists will be the artist will be creating the image and then the arts commission will be helping to actualize that um, turning that image into this glass backlit beautiful piece. And when the mission branch reopens, we will all be able to walk up the stairs and see this beautiful artwork welcoming us as we come up the staircase um, into the reading room on the second floor. Next slide, please. So that is the conclusion of the presentation portion of our, of our um, mission renovation meeting. And now we have an opportunity to hear from you um, and to answer questions that you may have for the library or for public works. And um, so I'm going to I'm going to kind of facilitate that conversation with the help of, of my colleagues, Anissa and Lisa behind the scenes. So attendees are, um, you can raise your hands if you have a question and you can also uh, put any questions into the Q&A box. If somebody were calling in, um, is there a way that they can also raise their hand? That's a good question. Um, well, we can we can call on the folks first, and then we can um, we can check in. Maybe we can unmute the callers to ask them if they have a question. And, and Kathy, this is Kate. If you look at the Q and A box, there's a couple of questions that have come in, um, so you can refer to those. Um, Okay. I just want to point out the first question was about the historic images that are currently um, on view on the stairway and hanging in the main reading room. And um, Mr. Weber was wondering what the plans were for those in the new building. Okay. Well, why don't we, I'll read, um, maybe what we could do, Kate, do you want to read Mr. Weber's question or I'll read the question and you read the response you gave him? 
Um, well, my response was uh, basically that they're safe and sound in the current building, they're still hanging and that they will be carefully removed before construction and where they will be sited in the new building is sort of still to be determined. Um, and he followed up and he was wondering, you know, if, um, if he could get a copy of some of those images, if there's no plans to hang them in the new library. Great. And then there's an, an, another question, a, an anonymous attendee asked, the community room on the first floor seems to have a raised area on the north side that has steps going down into the, into the community room. So if you walked in at the front door and went toward the community room, um, there are steps going down and they asked how the community room would be accessible. And Andy Sohn responded that the elevator serves that level. So the elevator will both go up to the second level and it will go down that short few steps to the community room level. Um, and I'm just gonna interject that um, we have confirmed that for anybody who's calling in on a phone can um, use star nine to raise their hand or lower their hand. Thank you. There's a comment um, that I'll read from an anonymous attendee. Great job overall, it looks beautiful. And Kate Patterson said, thank you. And I say thank you. And I'm sure our colleagues, Public Works are happy to hear that, that you like it. Um, there's a question, will the outdoor courtyard plaza space be open to the public to read books outdoors when an event is not going on? And our city librarian, Michael Lambert, has responded in the chat thread and said, yes, the outdoor space on the Bartlett side of the building will be accessible for patrons to enjoy during open hours. So let's move over to the, um, to, I see Craig Weber has, has their hand raised. Um, I'm allowing Craig to, to unmute and talk. Yes, can you hear me? We can. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to follow up on that question. I don't think Catherine really responded, um, uh, Kate, to your uh, uh, to the question I posted on the Q&A. Um, I wanted to know what is the disposition of those historic photographs that were in the main reading room of the library. Sure. And Craig. what are your plans? Um, are they going to be placed in storage for the next 100 years? Because they, they do contain family members of mine, and I would like to know what's yeah, going to happen. So I think that those, my understanding is that those images, and it's wonderful to know that your family is in them, um, those are part of a shades of the mission program that was done many years ago, I believe. And um, so the images are kind of, they're blown up um, on foam core. And so our plan for, for now would be to remove them from the branch during the construction so that they don't get damaged. Um, but the library, all of the images that are in the branch are images that are in our historic photo collection. And um, we haven't talked very much about how, what we'll be doing with images of that. You know, will we be incorporating those images back into the space afterward? But it's good to hear from you that you're interested. It sounds like you're interested in having images back in the space again. Um, well, I don't think I don't think you're you're really representing the heart of the mission and kind of the historical roots of the mission in the proposed plans and the artwork. Okay, um, so are you suggesting that, I, I, I wanna be sure that we understand your, your feedback and hear it. Um, so are, would what, you- Let me ask you, let me, let, me, let me present the question in a different way. Okay. What, what are you presenting in the new library in terms of the architecture, in terms of the artwork that is representative of the historical roots of the mission. Andy, do you have? Well, this is Andy uh, Stone from Public Works. We we haven't, you know, I love those photos. I would love to uh, find a way to incorporate them into the the building. Um, and it's certainly something. It's 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 not something that's been ruled out. Um, it's and. Uh, I, 
to be honest, I, we haven't we haven't considered a display of those, but we probably should um, talk about that and 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 find a way to to honor those pictures in some way. Um, and and probably you know newer restored versions of them. I think a lot of them are faded, um, but uh, you know I, I think it's um, it's it's not an intentional oversight. I assure you because those those are very well liked photographs. No, it, do, it doesn't necessarily have to be those photographs. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. partial to them because it, you know, my aunt is the Latina woman standing mm -hmm. in front of that old car uh, yeah. on Treat Street. Um, but I'm just curious about, you know, what are you, I mean, are you, are you, have you given any thought in terms of, of the historical representation of the mission going back to the turn of the century when the Germans and the Irish and the Italians built the mission, literally, uh, you know, stone by stone in, in terms of the Victorian architecture that, you know, still, uh, you know, what, what, what still exists even after the fire and earthquake of, of 1906. I mean, is there any, I don't know what you can do. I'm just presenting a question to you to think about, whether it's decorating or whether it's adding some architectural uh, features to the remodel. I, I mean, I don't know. That's your job. Architecturally, you know, we're, we're trying to honor the original building by by restoring certain elements mm -hmm. and 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 undoing some of that damage that, <laughs> that was done in the '90s. Um, culturally, I think that's a good question for the library. And um, you know, it, it, we we don't have a lot of physical display stuff that's built into the architecture. I do uh, think. Um that this is something that was of consideration with the selection of the public art as well, though, the, the Nopal de la Mission, the, the Nopal cactus, the significance to the community um, that we're maintaining the Montoya art as well. Um, but these are really, this is great feedback and hearing that this is important to you is, is valuable. So thank you, Craig. No, thank you. Um, we have another call in, a call in guest. I'm going to allow them to talk. Caller one. You should be able to talk. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Hi, this is Peter Warfield from Library Users Association. I had a couple of questions uh, and I guess I'm thinking maybe I should just read them one, two, three, four, five. Uh, with respect to history, has the Historic Preservation Commission reviewed and approved the plans that they, as they exist, including what I think is unfortunate that the stairs don't lead straight to the central centrality of the librarian's desk? With respect to interim service, what's the size? We know it's going to be smaller, presumably. What's the size compared with the existing place? And what are the hours and days to be open? We've heard seven days, and that's good. And we've heard evenings, which is good. But are the evenings going to be until 9 o'clock as pre-COVID or some other amount? Uh, and then in terms of participation, um, when I called in, they said the phone number was talk was listen only and said that uh, I would be muted throughout. I do appreciate that it, there's not, that there is a way to get through, but the information provided when I called was you're gonna be muted throughout. And then I'm curious how the, how the folks were, were um, selected for being notified of this meeting. I signed the list uh, last time on, at one of the in-person meetings and I thought that that would mean that I would get notified about future meetings concerning mission and I didn't get anything. Uh, I'm also concerned that the phone number hasn't been listed in a public way so that people don't have to use a computer to get the phone number. A lot of people who are poorer, who are minorities, who are older, who are not proficient in English are greatly disadvantaged by having to go through a computer uh, to get access to this. Um, and then did you send invitations to folks by email or by uh, phone? who might not have access to uh, basically how were the invitations uh, decided as to who was going to be contacted. 
And that's my list of five questions, more or less. Um, Peter, it may be difficult to answer all five of them in quick succession um, without any repeat of them. But the first sure, question, has the to. Historic Preservation Commission approved this plan? Yes, they did. This, this design was brought before the Historic Preservation and Civic Design um, Review. Very good. And, it, and we had a lot of engagement in those meetings um, and, and belief that we kind of, we were a number of, of meetings with them um, that took place not this past summer but the prior summer. Um, Kate, I think Kate Patterson may be able to answer your questions about the um, about the publicity for the for the meeting that we're at right now. Yeah, so um, every person who um, has a library card and an email um, received notice about this meeting. Um, we also prioritize it, the service area and um, sent multiple reminders to specifically mission patrons in both English and Spanish. It was in the, it's on the homepage of our website. It is on our calendar. It, it was in the e-news that went out um, this week. Um, so we've had multiple, um, um, Mr. Warfield, if you do get emails from us, then you've, you've received this notification multiple times. So we really tried to cast a wide net, net and get the word out about this meeting. I don't actually get emails as a patron. Well, it was also in the monthly ATL print edition. Mm -hmm. ATL at the library. Yes. And I believe, um, Another question that you had raised, um, Mr. Warfield, was um, the size, and I, I think you're referring to kind of the square footage of the building now versus when it, um, with the expansion on the Orange Alley side, and I think that's a good question for Andy Sohn, our architect. The question is, is, is this size, Kathy? Yeah, the size of the new slightly expanded branch versus the existing branch oh i you know i don't have it. i that's the thing i should always have with me and i don't i don't have it but um do yeah, you have the just a sense of um how many feet that yeah i think we're, we're somewhere around you know um three thousand additional feet in this building perhaps yes but yeah, it's grown a little bit. I was, it's a great question. I guess Kathy asked it. I, I was actually asking about the uh, square footage expected for the interim location. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, paired with the, no, don't be sorry. It was a very good question. I'd actually <laughs> be interested in knowing the book count that you expect in the old and in the new version so, as well. That's usually a, a yeah, we're not quite at that point yet because we haven't. Um, we've been really working on the, the the. I say we like I've been drawing. I'm not the architect. Our colleagues at Public Works have been working on the design of the building. And the furniture plan is something that we can do a little bit later. It's not something that is completely dialed in. Um, we're retaining all of the perimeter shelves. The addition will have space for books as well on the second floor and on the first floor. Um, and then the exact furnishing hasn't been selected, which includes all of the shelving in the middle of the floor. So it's difficult to give you a comparison for those elements at this time because it's still in progress. Mm -hmm. um, Peter, you had another, you had questions that I didn't manage sure. to write down as you were speaking. So I know that we have missed something. Would you like to restate? The ones we haven't answered. Sure, I was interested in the space that you're looking for or expecting to oh. have in the interim location, <clears throat> and the hours specifically, the number of hours weekly or and or evenings. Uh, a lot of the new branches, if not all of them, have had an hour chopped from what they were pre-COVID. So ones that were open till nine or were eight, and I heard you say, and I'm glad to hear evening hours, but I'm interested in what specifically how late. Um, for for the space answer, 
Um, when we've yeah. been looking for spaces, we've been looking for spaces that have at least, I believe, 2,000 square feet. Um, I don't know the exact square footage of the site that we're looking at um, right now that we're in conversation with real estate about, um, but it is um, it is an ample an ample space um, for for the type of service that I described with holds pick up some seating for people, materials for children, teens, adults, um, and then the public computing as well. Um, and compared, just comparing it with the current, the current branch, just the, as a comparison. I know it's not the same. The current branch, um, Andy, the square footage, I mean, it, it's, it's not as large, Peter, um, but the largest branch in our and our mission branch is not the largest branch, but I, I think it's around 14,000 square feet. It's, it's, it's only 10,000 square oh, feet in its, in its current form. Uh, Chinatown is around 18 to 19,000 feet. That's, I think that's your biggest branch. Okay. <clears throat> but 2,000 square feet for the temporary space is, um, is what we were looking for. The space that we have been talking about, I, it's, it's actually a, a good layout and it should actually incorporate more than um, more materials than the earlier space we had been considering, which we were happy about. Mm -hmm. um, and then the hours, um, we do have a plan to have evening hours. And I know you would like to know the exact hours. I think until we have the exact space, it's going to be difficult to say the exact hours. Um, I, I would expect we would be open until um, on some of the weeknights until seven or eight o'clock um, initially. Um, and we could see if we can restore that eight to nine hour later in the year. Okay, well, not all the answers what I would like, but thank you You're for being conscientious about it. And I do think that there are a lot of people who are in the category of vulnerable populations, quote unquote. Uh, with respect to how they would find out. And so a lot of, um, you know, the notification, it seems mm -hmm. to me, the library should make an effort to notify folks who do not have, who are not on email for one reason or another. Well, I forgot to mention something. We also had flyers that we distributed in English and Spanish at the branch itself. So um, that was another um, mode of getting the word out. I just want to take a moment, Kathy, because I, I'm just cognizant of the folks who may be receiving interpretation right now, mm -hmm. that we've had a number of questions that have come through in the chat, some of which have been answered. So I thought for those who are not dialed into the Q&A um, chat function that we might sort of revisit a few of those. Um, big yeah. questions so that everyone has the benefit of getting the information. Um, one of them was related to the outdoor courtyard plaza space and whether it would be open for the public to read books outdoors. And um, uh, our city librarian chimed in and noted that yes, the outdoor space on the Bartlett side of the building will be accessible for patrons to enjoy during open hours. Um, we had another question about, uh, sorry, um, about um, the number of books and um, and the, so the question was, uh, I hope books will feature prominently in the new upstairs and that robust is robust. Also the community room is open to the rest of the building, yes. Does that mean nothing noisy like Bernal Jazz or the downstairs activities will echo round upstairs? And the city librarian, Michael Lambert, um, said thanks for your feedback. Yes, physical collections will be showcased prominently. We aspire to provide a great experience for our patrons to find the materials they are seeking and enjoy browsing the book displays. I think this might be a good opportunity too to uh, mention Andy or Kathy that you, we will be expanding our footprint with the addition on the outside of the building with the team room. So I know that um, there's been some comments related to the uh, bookshelves and um, the lowered height. So I think it's probably worth addressing, um, you know, the different types of bookshelves we'll have in there um, and how 
um, and why that those choices were made. And then also sort of mentioned that there's an, going to be an expansion where we can put more books and there's a few more. So why don't you answer that? And then I can go back into this Q and A. Sure. Um, so one of the things that I had mentioned in, in the beginning of our presentation was our guiding principle and that we're, we're one of the guiding principles is this transparency and being able to see across the spaces. Um, and so there had been a tendency in libraries in the past, um, and, and actually our mission, our beautiful mission branch suffered because of this um, with the most recent renovation with very, very tall books, many of which could not be reached easily um, by our patrons. And the, the books that are actually, what we find in libraries is the books that are visible, the books that you can see that are at eye height, those are the books that people really check out and circulate. And um, so what we're looking for in this space, what we were really aiming for was that sense of openness and that sense of airiness of the original mission branch, which did not was not chock full of books all around in the interior spaces. The, the perimeter shelves around the exterior walls, those were bookshelves. Um, but we know that we love our books in San Francisco and we love our Spanish books and our English books. And so um, we, have incorporated shelves that are of a height that can still be seen over by adult patrons. Um, and we're still determining exactly which shelves this will be. The shelving units have not been selected yet, but also to be mobile, um, they need to be a certain, they need to be under a certain height so that we can move them around and keep our flexibility of our floor plan. So, those, um, the flexibility that we were looking for and that we heard from the community that you were looking for, and also that transparency of the space and kind of the grandeur of the space. Um, those are some of the things that we were bearing in mind when making the decision that we were going to go with the mobile furnishings, the mobile bookshelves and the lower height bookshelves. Um, but we are committed to having really lots and lots and lots of books and other materials in our libraries. We have great, um, resources in our community and we have a really excellent and robust book budget and we definitely plan to make books a focal point of our library all of our libraries thank you kathy i just want to call attention to another open question in the chat it appears zach is waiting uh to be able to ask their question or make a comment. So I don't know if Zach is waiting on the phone. Do we have any other callers waiting? We do, Zach is um, being able to speak now. Yes, hi, thank you uh, for finally getting to the public questions and comments. Uh, this process has been infuriating. It's been extremely hard to feel like as a member of the public and someone who lives in this neighborhood that I have any access to this process. The fact that questions and comments were waited till like something like an hour after this meeting started, we had to sit through this presentation yet again, is just another slap in the face to the public. The accessibility for disabled folks and for virtual attendance to your previous meetings for phone attendance was completely deprioritized. There wasn't even accessibility information on the website or in the emails sent out until I made a formal complaint with the mayor's office on disability. That does not show uh, the respect to this community that we deserve. And it really feels like this project is being proposed and pushed through, and I do emphasize the word pushed, without proper community outreach and community input. These meetings are a sham. They require us to sit through your presentation of almost an hour to, and if we even can find out these meetings exist and requiring 72 hours to have a disability accommodation when I don't even think the notification was given a week ago, it's really deplorable to see this kind of interaction with the public. You say you hand out flyers. How many flyers did you hand out? Where did you hand them out? Uh, you get really reasonable questions about what are the hours gonna be at this branch during construction and afterwards. You can't even answer that. Like it's really disgusting and really disheartening to see these kind of projects. And, and that's aside from the fact, you know, have have you involved uh, uh, Calais 24 in this? Have you involved the Mission Neighborhood Cultural Center? Like, have you involved Presida Eyes? Like this project is clearly 
a component of the city getting more kickbacks from contractors and construction jobs, which you've always prioritized during COVID rather than public safety. Like people can't even get masks right now. And it's extremely hard for people to get access to safe distancing and PPE to access libraries and technology. And rather than prioritizing that and putting money towards people's safety, it's being put towards a big, huge construction project for months, if not years of this crap going to be drilling and, and banging in the neighborhood when people are sheltering in place and already stressed out and don't need more noise pollution and more regular pollution from what this project is going to cause. It's super upsetting to see this being pushed through during a pandemic when this money should really be going to better things, to increased hours and increased access, getting laptops to people, getting ways that the digital divide is not keeping the city in a caste system where the haves and the have nots are deeply separated with access to our libraries, programs and services. Moreover, this project is clearly only a result of the city caring about this neighborhood now that it's being gentrified with the tech money that's coming into it and the whitening of this neighborhood. The city did not care about this neighborhood and these kind of things until this started to happen. And now this is just another project to push that agenda. Let us not forget that the library spent something like $14,000 a few years ago to erase the multicultural history that was painted on the outside of the Bernal Heights Library branch with the Victor Hara mural. The library decided we don't want people of color on that library. We don't want to remember the multicultural and political history that took place there. They decided to paint it over, to spend thousands of dollars to paint it over. I wanna remind you all and everyone here that the Department of Public Works is ridiculously corrupt. The head of the Public Works, Mohammed Nuru, was arrested by the FBI on charges of corruption in 2020. According to CBS News, he took, quote, continuous bribes from the contractors, development, developers, and entities he regulated. He now faces a prison sentence for enriching himself at the expense of the public as he sat in high office. This is the former director of the department that's presenting here today. Sound a little bit familiar? Getting kickbacks from contractors? Creating more public projects that people aren't even aware of? Doing insufficient outreach to people? Not including community centers? Not providing clear statistics and information about something as simple as library hours? Misuse of funds to push these projects through so you can get those kickbacks? That's what's going on here. And I really hate to see it. And I don't believe the public is being included in this process. I feel we are being excluded. We are being forced to wait till the very end here to even have our input. And of course, you're just going to ignore it and just try to, try to brush it off, make this sound like a nice little PR move. It's disgusting. It's deplorable. I hate to see this happening in my community and I will continue to speak out against it. Thank you for your feedback, Zach. Nisa, do we have any other callers? If not, I'll continue um, reading the other questions that came through so that everyone can hear the questions and answers. We are good. I think we should switch to some of the questions folks are throwing in the chat. We've, um... Great. And Kate, okay, will, will you read some of those so Andy and I can? Yeah, respond? sure. Thank I you. just want to cover the ones again because there's folks on this call who are getting interpretation and they they may not be seeing these question and answers. So um, the one question was, will the temporary library be located near the current location? And um, uh, Michael Lambert responded, yes, the temporary location will remain in the mission district. The exact location, um, we're still working on it. So we've 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 mentioned that a number of times. Um, someone asked, I'm curious about the new study room and um, what has that area been used for until now? Will it be a quiet area with a door? And Andy Stone responded, the study room is in the location of the current stair that leads from the lobby. Andy, is there anything else you wanna say about that study room? Okay, so the, the study room on the upper floor that's, um on the uh, southeast corner that's in the location of the existing stair where you come up where there's the historic photos as you come up the stair that'll be on, on the main floor 
there um, and it will it will not be an enclosed room it will have an open it will have a, a, an opening and a door opening but not a door um, and in that room will be one panel from the original stair that the sort of la the last remnant of that stair so we're using that as a decorative portion inside that room in terms of the, there was a question about the community room on the ground floor whether it or not it's got acoustic separation from the rest of the building and it does i think the picture that we showed that it, there's a glass wall there and because it's glass it doesn't really come through on on the on the image that we showed but yeah it's got glass doors and and and, and a big glass window so the community room is uh, acoustically separated from the rest of the building. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so we have someone's hand is up. Um, I'm going to, um, yes. Uh, is it Minaj? Um, Minaj has put his, down, his hand down. Okay. And the one person that has their hand up has already spoken. Maybe go on to the yeah, open wanna... questions for now. Perfect. I want to make sure that um, folks who haven't had a chance to be heard are heard. So the next question was about um, the marble on the staircase and um, and whether or not we would be able to incorporate it in the new design. And Andy responded that we looked long and hard at city storage facilities for salvaged materials from the 1990s, but found nothing. There's one terracotta panel that is in the current lobby. This will be featured in the new study room on the main floor. So is there anything else you wanna add, Andy, about repurposing of old materials? Well, you know, it's disheartening to find that you, we weren't able to turn up the original doors, for instance, the, the front entry doors and some of that other stair material um, that we, we would have thought would have been salvaged. And um, the primary storage place is called Brooks Hall in San Francisco. It's underneath Civic Center and, uh, and city engineer, I mean, the uh, library's engineer and I, we spent a lot of time digging through that, you know, uh, every every inch of that that space and couldn't find anything. Uh, unfortunately, we really wanted to get as many artifacts as we could, um, but we weren't, weren't able to turn anything up. OK, thank you. So the next question is, how is the remodel finance? It's in the budget, as you recall, is 24 million. And um, Michael Lambert responded, the renovation is financed through the library's budget. The Library Preservation Fund allows the library to self-finance many of our capital projects, including this major renovation. So that brings us up to speed on the I think questions. there was, I oh. saw one other one. Um, somebody asked about the author names on the wall in the team oh, room. Oh, yes, thank you. Are those currently on the outer wall of the building and thus will be displayed as the wall art? And um, yeah, the building has kind of classical authors displayed laid up near the, you know, all, all around the building at the windows. And the windows that you can currently, that the names that you can currently see if you were to stand at the orange alley side of the building on the second floor, that's going to be the level of the teen space. So the teens will be right there with that historic, like up close and personal with, with that feature, that detail of the building that right now is on the exterior, it will become the interior and that, that is being preserved. Um, so the, the way that that space is on both the upper and the lower floor, um, the Historic Preservation Commission was really involved in sharing their ideas and feedback about how, how the old and the new space um, worked with one another. And so um, we're really pleased with how the design has come out. And it's, I think it'll be a really cool thing for the teens that they're kind of in the space that used to be outside the second floor. It'll, it's just a neat thing to think about. Thank you. Um, we have a couple open questions, but I know that a couple of hands are raised. So why don't we hear from those folks first and then we'll um, go back to a couple of the open questions we have in the chat. Okay, so why don't we, I think that the phone person, um, we can unmute them. Um, I just wanna make sure um, Mr. Warfield- uh, Both, of, both of these speakers have already asked questions. If there's any oh. questions from anyone else, uh, there is an open question from a Joe. Uh, he didn't have a question though, sorry. He says he, uh, okay. We do have an open question from all three of the people who have spoke already. 
Are we ready to move on? And Can I share something personal right now? Um, this is my first time being a presenter in this particular format. I've attended a lot of Zoom meetings during the pandemic, but I've never been in this format. And I actually just learned that there's an open section versus an answered section. I had been looking only <laughs> at the answered section. And Mr. Weber, I'm very sorry. I don't think that I was understanding how the relationships were between the questions. So I didn't intentionally not respond to a portion of yours before it. This is just my learning moment. So thank you for your patience. Um, Don't worry. Um, but just because we're, we're running short on time, um, Mr. Weber had a couple questions um, about that I, I'm just going to summarize that are about flexibility of space. Um, um, you know, how the building, the renovation um, will allow for other uses of the space for say music and dance or performance. And so maybe you can talk about some of the thought behind um, making it a more flexible space. Sure. Um, something that we have, oh no, there's an alarm going off in my house and I hope you can't hear it. Um, something that, that we do right now in the mission branch is that we move the furniture around and we host events in the adult area um, or we move the things around in the children's room and we host our story time there. So we're really used to having our programming in among the materials and in among the spaces. Um, we incorporated this meeting room so that we had the ability to really have programs that were in a program room and where it was a little bit more focused and it was less disruptive to other, um, other people who were using the space. But that said, at the library, we kind of like to go big. So when we're doing a library open house, we might envision like doing one type of program upstairs for one age group and another program in, in the community space for, for um, a different age group. Um, and we really just like the flexibility that we can have groupings of chairs and furnishings that are different, that if we find um, that the layout that we would prefer to, to have a table in a location where right now there's a, book, a bookshelf, that we can swap those things without having to do a major renovation. Um, one of the things that we found with some of our branch library improvement program branches is that um, while there was theoretically the ability to move things around. In a lot of cases, the furniture plan that was in place on opening day was really the way you had to keep it. And this more flexible furniture plan, we're hoping that it makes it more adaptable in the future, that if library, um, if, if in the future, nobody's using desktop computers, they're all using laptops or tablets or some special paper of the future that hasn't been invented that, that you can compute with, and connect with the internet with, um, that we can use those spaces that they're not locked in as these are computer spaces um, or these are reader chairs. We, the space is designed in a way that we can evolve it kind of throughout the day as, as different activities are being hosted or different groups are using the space. And then we can also evolve it over time, over a period of years without requiring a major renovation. I hope that I answered that I think that there are kind of two questions that I that I hope Great. that that addressed. Thanks, Kathy. Um, yeah. I just wanted to um, Zach had a question about how many flyers passed out. Um, the branch staff actually was responsible for passing out the flyer, so we don't have that exact exact answer, but they were distributed through the SFPL to go service as well as the bookmobile. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, they, they had a, a, a large quantity. I'm not sure how many actually, if they kept track of how many actually went into hands. And then he had another question about community engagement for this project, um, citing hey. Calle 24, Presida Eyes, and um, the Mission Neighborhood Cultural Center. And um, I don't know, um, perhaps you can address, you know, um, at the very early stages of this project, you know, what kind of maybe recap some of the community engagement that was done. Um, as, sure. As well, one done. of the groups um, during the, the portion of the presentation where we talked about the Mission Library Public Art, I did read the, read the name of um, Angelica Rodriguez, the gallery coordinator of Mission Cultural Center. So as far as the selection of the art, the new public art, um, Mission Cultural Center was definitely included and had a representative on the art panel, the art selection panel. Um, 
with regards to um, community organizations, one thing that um, our mission branch staff do really well is engage their community. And um, we actually, one of our branch managers is in attendance right now and may wish to, to speak to that. Laura, please raise your hand if you would like to. But um, I know that what they've been doing throughout this multi-year process um, is that they've been reaching out to community organizations. They've been talking up what's going on and what we're looking to do and how we want to get the community to come to the various meetings that we've hosted. We've had really good attendance back at the meetings that we hosted um, at the, the very beginning when we just had open format meetings and said, hey, we're thinking of renovating this branch and what is it that, um, what is it that you would like? And so the community groups mentioned, I'm, I am confident that they, we're aware that we are doing this renovation and many of them helped us to get the word out. Um, so I, I do think that we've had a lot of opportunities for engagement and we've been really impressed all along the way at how many people we've heard from. 300 people commenting on public art for the Mission Branch Library is, a, it's actually more than most other art projects um, get comments on. So our community is really excited and um, really eager to be here for this. And at the community meetings we hosted in person, we saw some of the same folks who have, the ones we just hosted in December, we saw people who we've actually seen over the years multiple times as they continue to engage, which is really wonderful too. And I credit the branch staff with making that, making that happen. Um, we have only about a minute or two left in yeah. our time so and wait wait Kathy I just because our interpreters are you know they're scheduled to conclude at 8 30 and I just want to be mindful of that I would suggest that if there are additional questions we didn't get to um I know um then we you can email them to the chief of branches email and we will um provide a response and we'll capture that response in the minutes that we are taking for this meeting so that everyone has the benefit of your question and our answer Sound good? Um, let me also uh, just remind everybody, I introduced someone at the very beginning of the meeting who is still here. Her name is Flo Batad, Florinda Batad. You can see her in the panelist list. Flo has been taking minutes the whole time. And um, we are, since this is the same content we've already presented at the two prior meetings, we're doing a consolidated minutes that um, will be available in English and in Spanish. And um, those minutes are thanks to Flo and Michael Roman who work in the Chief of Branches office. And we'll of course incorporate additional um, additional questions into that if, if those are shared with us. Um, so I think what we can do is to proactively email you all after this meeting to make sure that you have the address that you can reach my team at in the Chief of Branches office. And I just, I'm going to put it in the chat, but it's chief of branches at sfpl.org. Correct, Kathy? Um, yes, that is correct. So chief of branches at sfpl.org. I just put it in the chat. I think you can also reach us at just COB, which is much shorter. Flo, that's correct, right? I think you can unmute Flo. Yeah, I think you can just do cob at chief at um, sfpl.org. Thanks, Kate, for putting that yes. in the chat. Yes, just cob at sfpl.org. Great, thank you, Flo. <laughs> and you know, we can send an email to everyone who joined us tonight, and just with that, with that email as a follow up. Thank Wonderful. you for coming. You Great. can email your questions to this email. Okay, and with that, I want to thank you for coming. It was really wonderful to, to meet with you in this way. I'm glad that we did it. We had a very good turnout and I appreciate Zach that you suggested it to us um, and that you were able to join us for this meeting and in, in the last meeting, we appreciate everyone um, who came and shared feedback and ideas and, um, and that you shared your questions with us because um, I know that other community members will benefit from reading the minutes and, and even if they weren't able to join us today. But I do wanna thank you for taking the time for making space for this important project and for participating in this community endeavor. We're really excited about the renovation and I hope I'll have an email to you soon about our temporary space and where it will be and what the hours will be. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate you all coming.